In today's video, we are going to review this bad boy right here, this awesome TV, the Samsung Q80 QLED. That's today's video. Before we begin, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so you can get notified for future videos. I'd love to have you back in the next one. Well, hey guys, Juan here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out this video. So today we're doing a little bit of a review on the Samsung Q80. This is a 65 inch TV that I just got and I've had for a little bit of time now and I wanted to give my review on it after owning it and using it and putting it to uh, quite a few hours of use with my kids and my family of watching TV and to give my feedback and see if this is maybe a TV that you're interested in purchasing and hopefully you can base that off of some of my opinions on being an honest normal average consumer of buying a television. Now, I don't work for Samsung. I don't, uh, I'm not affiliated with them by any means. So what I'm telling you is all my honest opinion of owning this thing for a little bit of time now. So what I'll do is I'll talk about what I've learned from it and then I'll talk about more of the in-depth specifics on this TV later on in the video. But as far as owning it for a few weeks now, um, it's been a great TV. The picture quality is awesome. I mean, like, really awesome. So I upgraded from a uh, 4K UHD TV to this QLED 4K uh, UHD TV. Also, it's just bigger. I had a, a 55 inch and I went bigger to 65. So I think a lot of times whenever we upgrade our televisions, we usually end up going bigger. Um, but that's what I did. And I got to tell you, the picture on this, beautiful. It's just awesome. Uh, the other day I was watching Endgame on it and the clarity was so clear. It was almost like they were right there and I could reach in there and touch them. That's how the clarity is on this. So like right now, I've got a background image on here. This is kind of like their um, screensavers that they have. Samsung has built in a ton of different kinds of screensavers that you can put on there. So instead of just having like a black picture, uh, whenever you're not watching TV, you can have something that's pretty to, to look at just like this and it stays on there for quite a, quite a long time. Now, one of the main reasons that I went with the QLED when I was shopping around for televisions because I had it boiled down to two TVs. I was either gonna get the Samsung uh, QLED or I was gonna get the LG OLED display because I think that's what TVs are gonna be going to in the future. So I wanted to make sure that I buy a, a TV that's gonna last a while and it's gonna be kind of future-proof because how often do you buy TVs for your, your main living room is, you know, every so many years. So I wanted to make sure that I got one that's gonna last a while and it's gonna be something that's gonna be, um, you know, a good TV for years to come. But the reason that I went with this one, the QLED, was because when it comes to OLED and QLED, if you are in a room that has a lot of natural light, like for this room, for example, I've got a lot of windows over here, there's a couple windows over here, there's a glare that'll be on the TV. The Samsung QLED is better when it comes to glares on a TV than they are with OLED. So that was one of the big reasons that I went with this TV. Um, also, I am a fan of Samsung. Um, I've had of them, I've had a few TVs of theirs and they've always lasted a long time versus somebody who maybe had a Vizio or something like that. I had a buddy who had a Vizio and it lasted like a year and it broke on him. My Samsungs have always lasted quite a long time. So they're a trusted brand. Um, they're at the top, you know, they're right there with uh, Sony and LG. And so buying a Samsung QLED was a, something that I was pretty confident in it lasting for years to come. Now, let me talk about some of the specifics of actually using this thing for a little while. This has what's called Bixby built into it, okay? And if anybody has a, a Samsung device, they're pretty familiar with what Bixby is. But if you're not, Bixby is kind of like Samsung Siri, like Apple Siri, or um, it's kind of like their Amazon Alexa, okay? It has Bixby built in it. So you can talk to this TV and turn it on with the Bixby command. You just say, hey, Bixby. But let me tell you, it's not that good yet, okay? Samsung has some work to do with that. Um, I would have to say that Amazon's Alexa is the leader in the industry when it comes to artificial intelligence and talking with voice commands. Um, Siri works pretty good on my phone, 
Maybe not as good as Alexa, but these guys are last in line. I don't know, for some reason it, it doesn't uh, understand my voice very well. I sometimes gotta yell it. It does have that capability to have that voice command in your TV. So talk about living in the future. We're like in the Jetsons age or Back to the Future too, if you're a fan of those movies like I am. So a little bit more on that Bixby. Uh, another reason why I'm just, uh, don't know that I'm a, quite a fan of that feature on this TV is there's been times that we've been in our room watching TV and we would have a conversation with one another and then it'll pop up. Like we, we activated it and it did that and out of the middle of nowhere. I mean, we didn't say the word Bixby. So that feature, I'm not a big fan of it and I'm still trying to learn how to even turn off that feature that way. Um, it doesn't interrupt our TV watching with a random pop up. That's one of the cons on this TV that I've experienced so far. Now the other thing that I experienced that was kind of a con is that there was a time that I turned off the TV completely and I was in the kitchen area and I was kind of cleaning and then all of a sudden the TV just came back on. How creepy is that? Um, but I'm sure it was because of that Bixby built in there that it turned it on so it's almost like having poltergeist TV inside your house. So that was kind of weird. Um, it's only done that twice to me. Um, it, in the middle of the night, the TV came on one time. So in the good length of time that we've owned this TV, that's happened. So that's a that's the con on it. But the pros outweigh the cons on this TV. It is such a great TV. The clarity, the picture on it is just amazing. So let's, let's take a look at it a little bit. So the remote on this thing looks like this. Okay, so it's a pretty narrow remote. Uh, there's not a whole lot of buttons on there, so it's not real daunting. Sometimes you can get a remote that's got so many different buttons on there that you don't really know what to do with, but this is what it, the remote looks like, and it, it's kind of shaped like that. So it's almost a, a little bit narrow to lose into your couch or your recliner, but just keep an eye on this bad boy. Now, the great thing with this, it is a smart TV, so it does have its own smart capabilities that are built right into the TV. You don't have to go out and buy an external stick to put in there, another like a Roku device or, or a fire stick or anything like that. Samsung has that their own smart technology built into the TV. So when you hit the home button, just like this, it brings up all the different options of apps that you can download on there. And with this being one of the newest TVs out on the market, one of the best TVs out on the market, it's got every app that you can pretty much think of. Um, so it's got even Apple TV, which sometimes can be, sometimes it's not available on all TVs, but this has Apple TV. It's got your Disney Plus, your Hulu, your Netflix, which are built in. And then also on the remote, it's actually got Netflix uh, right here. It's got Prime Video and Hulu as sh quick shortcuts that you can press and it'll automatically launch those apps. And another thing that this TV has that a lot of TVs don't have is a Spectrum TV app. So maybe if you have cable TV, cable internet like that, the Spectrum TV app is available on the Samsung device because they only released their app to be available at the time of this recording to two different platforms, and that was Samsung and Roku. So if you have a Roku TV, Roku stick, you can get the Spectrum TV app, and if you have a Samsung, you can get that also. Like I said, it's got pretty much everything available out there on the App Store. You can get it on this TV. And along with having all the different apps that you can download, it does have its own like TV platform. So um, we'll go right here, this little icon. So right there's Disney Plus, Spectrum. That little icon there is kind of like their own built-in platform. And it's got free movies on there also. It's got movies that you can buy. I haven't used it too much because I've always just used our Netflix or our Disney Plus, but it does have that capability in case you buy it and you don't have a subscription to Netflix, Hulu, or any of the other ones. You can watch free movies on their built-in platform. And like I mentioned previously in the video, it's got its ambient mode, so it's got all these different options to uh, select different uh, screensavers on there. So we'll go to the ambient mode screen on this right now. Okay, so it's loading, and then along here on the bottom, it's got different kinds of uh, features. It's got like my album, so maybe if you wanted to upload your own pictures to the Samsung platform, you could have your own pictures displayed on here. Um, it's got like artwork, it's got like different kinds of um, uh, contemporary type of artwork. So it's got so many different features on there, but I kind of like the landscape view. So I've kept that on there for a little while. Every once in a while, I'll change it up. And if you are in the whole smart things platform with the Samsung, it is built right into this TV to where you can control some of your other devices that are in that smart things hub. So that's kind of a neat little feature that you're able to access it 
right here on your remote through there. So another way is you could always just dive into your phone, download the Smart Things app and do it that way also. So uh, it gives you so many different uh, ways of being able to access your content and they do it very easily. All right, so for example, right here, this is end game. Um, I wish you guys could really see the clarity of this screen here. It's kind of hard to tell from uh, recording on, on it like this, but um, it's got excellent quality. And the sound is pretty good for just being the built-in speakers on a TV. I know a lot of people will get sound bars uh, to put at the bottom of their TV or mount them. It has pretty good sound for just being the standalone speakers that are built in. And if you're concerned about the HDMI inputs on this, because some TVs can be limited on how many HDMI inputs they have in there, this one has a total of four that you can put in. I know a lot of times uh, the way devices are going nowadays, it, I mean, you really don't need to be plugging stuff in because everything's going digital and downloading an app and stuff. For, for example, like that Spectrum TV, you don't even need boxes anymore to access your, your cable uh, TV you download an app. So we're heading in that type of generation, that type of future technology to where, you know, not really needing to, to plug HDMI inputs in there as much as you did five years ago. But this one does have four available in case you need to plug a Blu-ray player in if anybody still watches discs. Another great feature with this TV is the bezel that goes all the way around the TV right here. It's really thin, so um, most of what you see is just screen. There's not a whole lot of plastic that you see along the edges. Uh, now this is a 65 inch TV, that's what it's advertised at, but I wanna put a tape measure on it so that way you guys can see exactly what the exact measurement is of screen real estate that you get. So whenever they say uh, the inches of a TV, you always measure from angle to angle like that. You don't measure across or down. So we're gonna put a tape measure on us and see what it measures out to be. All right, so we got a tape measure here, let's measure it. Okay, so the actual measurement comes to be about 65 and 3 eighths. So that's, uh, they actually give you 3 eighths of an inch extra. So that's pretty good. That's what that measures, the actual measurement of screen real estate on this TV. Now I'll go ahead and measure the uh, rest of the dimensions, the, the width and the, the height on it. That way you can see if it's possibly um, a TV that'll fit in your particular space. So I know whenever I go buy a TV, I'm that weirdo who does take my tape measure and, and measure the TV because I want to make sure it fits in my space here. I want to make sure it's not, you know, over oversized or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and measure that, give you those measurements to see if it's something that you could use. All right, so the height is 32 and a half overall. And then now the width. The width is 57 and a quarter, uh, 57 and a quarter wide. So those are the measurements on this TV that's the footprint that it would take if you were to mount it on your wall or if you put it on a TV stand like I'm doing. So um, normally I, I do like to mount my televisions on the wall, but if you could tell, I'm on a corner here uh, of a room. So I'm gonna have to keep it on a TV stand. Now, so that's some of the specifics of being an honest user. Uh, probably a lot of people who are gonna watch this video are um, not really ones that need to dive so much into the technical part of the television. They just wanna know some of the, the you know main user specifics. So that's what I've experienced so far. All right, so hopefully this helped you out in deciding if this was the TV for you. Um, if it is, make sure you throw a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it and go ahead and subscribe to my channel now. That way you can see all the tech videos that I'm making here in the next uh, year to come. And uh, I'd love to have you back in the next one as a subscriber. So thanks for watching this video, guys. And as always, be creative.